Welcome to the Advanced Broadcast Channel API with RxJS and Angular. And this is the second video in a two-part series which you should watch from the beginning. I will show you in this video a practical example of the Broadcast Channel API and how to do efficient tab-to-tab -tab communication with RxJS and the common pitfalls. I have made the example in this video in Angular and you might be wondering why I did that. And the main reason is just that it's my preferred framework and I will make a video on that in the future. But it's also the framework that works best with RxJS which is built in to Angular. And RxJS is something we need to help us handle the async nature of the broadcast channel. The setup is just a default Angular project which you can generate with these commands. And the entire project is available on GitHub, links in the description below. And here you can see the project setup where everything interesting is within src slash app where you have the main components with a card detail page and a cards page. And of course you also have a core service that's used for just generating the cards you see. The cards page is just a list of cards being displayed which you then can click on. And when you click on a card, we want that card to be opened in the other tab over the broadcast channel. Here or in the cards page component in the card clicked function, there we need to add some code that handles the broadcasting. We start by using the broadcast handler service, which I'm going to show a bit later, where you can send a message with a which is just an acknowledgement that the message was received on the other end. And we're also specifying a channel name, which is just a string, an action, which allows you to say which action you want to be performed, and the data, which is the card ID, which of course we need to subscribe to, to get updates on whether it was received and handle that. If it was received by another tab, you will show a snack bar just saying that it was synchronized, and if not, you will open it in a new tab. And here, over on the receiving end, we want to receive each of the messages sent over this channel. So we go against the broadcast channel handler service dot get channel messages with our channel name and the action we specified, of which we subscribe to. So we get each message as a separate event, and then we navigate to that message ID dot data or the card ID. This is a common pattern to help reduce the impact of the broadcast channel due to some limits on testing that I will come back to later. And we also show a snack bar for the user, notifying them that it was updated. And of course we need to handle the navigation change with Angler's activated route, subscribe to that, and select the active card based on the new ID. So by clicking any card, you will see it be synchronized over the broadcast channel to the other tab by changing the URL. The broadcast handler service has a few helper files that just has the channel names and the channel interfaces and types, but the main part is the service, which has a few public functions, which allows you to get any channel message over a specific channel name and for example, action wrapped as an observable, which means you can filter down to the message you want with all the power of RxJS on top. And you can, of course, send a message as well. This is send and forget, not knowing if the message was received by anyone, but you can also send it with ACK, which means that you want to know if the message was received and this is handled automatically internally by the broadcast handler for you. The receiving tab, if a tab is present, will intercept the message with a request for a ACK and send that acknowledgement back automatically before it's passed on to that tab. And this is handled by having a race between the message or a timer, which is 500 milliseconds. And race only allows one message to get through, either the timer or the response to the ACK. And there's a lot of other code here as well, but the only other relevant part is the actual wrapper around the broadcast handler, where you have the on message and on error functions. And here you can see that we're also wrapping the message in a visibility check, which means that a tab will only receive and respond to ACK messages if it's visible 
Let's look at a few more examples of when you can use the broadcast channel. The first one is a stock application where you can have several windows showing different stocks and being able to switch to entire different list of stocks with just one click. A lot of traders are using more than one screen at a time, so this will be a huge time saver. Another good example is YouTube with its new mini player, which allows you to minimize the video you're playing into a small window and choose another video to play and all of this is limited to one tab but it's easy to split this up into several tabs interacting with each other. Let's move on to some common pitfalls when using a more advanced approach to the broadcast channel. The first one, just to repeat that this is desktop only as multi-tab on mobile is not practical and it will usually be limited to work applications where the user is spending a significant amount of time in one application on desktop with more than one screen. And then we have the problem of the hidden receiver. That's where hidden tabs are a problem because they can receive messages while being invisible or being in the background. That is handled automatically by the broadcast handler service, but you can handle it manually by using the document of visibility state. A common pattern some developers might want to use is a heartbeat system where you repeatedly check if the tab is present by sending constant ping messages. And this has some problems as you might miss the tab closing. Imagine the user is closing the tab just after a heartbeat, then you will have an out of sync period until the next heartbeat where you don't know if the tab is open or closed. And that makes it unstable and unreliable and you should consider using window.on before unload which allows you to send a last message before a tab is closed by the user. Finally, we have the testing problem, because it's almost impossible to test the broadcast channel, because here we are sending messages between tabs and most testing frameworks, like for example Cypress, have a one tab limit. They want the test to be running in one tab only. Then you need to mock and fake a lot, but the best solution is usually just to limit what the broadcast channel does, as we did in the code, where we only changing the URL and nothing else because we can later add a test to what happens when the URL is changed. And then alternatively, just manually testing the minor part that the broadcast channel touches. And some of you might be thinking, how can I take this further? How can I send a message, not just between two tabs, but between two computers? And this is actually something you can accomplish with WebRTC's data channel. And that is something I'm going to cover in the future, so please subscribe for that. And that was the Advanced Broadcast Channel API. Thank you for watching and I hope you will still love this API just as much as I do.